Once you tilt the motor all the way up, if you're going to crack that cap, we always want to make sure for safety we have some type of locking device here so that in working on any of this, if the motor should drop down, this is our protection. If there is no latch or anything, make sure you put a pipe or something through here to prevent it from actually coming down and crushing your hands in there. So let's take a look at the fluid. Checking the fluid is kind of like uh, what we did on the gear oil earlier today. Uh, we're going to remove this cap over here. Now, some use a screwdriver, some use a, uh, a socket. We want to make sure that we're going to use the right tool, get that off because some of these are aluminum and some of these are plastic. They get chewed up really easy. So if I take this off and we loosened it up previously uh, and we can see fluids already starting to drip out. So that tells me that we have an appropriate level. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to look at that fluid and I'm looking for the color. All right, if I've got fluid that comes out and it's like a reddish color, you know, uh, a yellow, orangey color and, and fairly clear, uh, that's probably the color of the fluid. If I pull it out and there's streaks of white in it or it's milky, that's an indication that water has gotten into the system and it's going to need a rebuild. If I take it apart and it's got silver streaks in it and again it feels gritty, then that's a sign that there's some type of metal issue inside there. Something has come apart and again, this unit's going to have to be serviced. If I take that cap off and no fluid comes out, then what we're going to do is we're going to get a small wire tie and bend it and pop it down there because you may find that it's only an eighth or two down. And we'll just check that to make sure everything's okay. And if we've got to top it off, you got to follow what the manufacturer's recommendations are because some tell you to use their specific trim fluid. Uh, some tell you you can use automatic transmission fluid. So we want to make sure we're using the appropriate oil here for the system. Uh, inside this cap also is some type of O-ring or washer. So if you take the cap off, uh, you want to make sure that it's still there. I've been in some situations where in working on it, I've pulled the cap off and the O-ring fell on the ground. Uh, if you go to put that back on, Eventually, every time you run the system up and down, you're going to lose the fluid uh, and also cause a considerable amount of oil to go out onto the water. So uh, either scenario is not desirable. Another area to look at is the water pickup. Now, the water pickup may be made of metal or plastic. Uh, some of the metal ones are just a small holes with no screens. Uh, some have plastic removable screens. Either version can get clogged up. So I've seen seaweed and debris get stuck in here and then cause a loss of cooling to the engine, ultimately can cause a power head failure. So we want to make sure that these areas are clean. Uh, I've got a pickup here and you can see there's some very small holes. And not only does stuff get plugged in from these holes on the outside, but depending on where you are and how far the motor tilts up, we get invasive species, uh, zebra mussels that actually grow on the inside uh, in this area and it may not be a noticeable thing here but we've got to look actually inside there and see what it looks like and you might be surprised to see some different stuff growing in there in that case you're gonna to have to remove these screens and take them off for cleaning and keep in mind that if these screens do fall out or are missing uh, that may actually cause an overheat because the gear case is kind of wedged shaped when it goes through the water and the water is made to come across these screens and be pushed up in there so again any blockage in here is gonna reduce the flow of water and cause an overheat. 